We're revising the Type 59. A heavy tank, not some hybrid. A candidate to replace the FV-183B. This will add to players' convenience. It was a hard decision. A branch of French heavy tanks without autoloaders. We plan to add them into the game. We've already told you that we've been moving steadily, branch by branch, nation by nation. And in the next update, we will work closely on the British vehicles. We also needed to rework the Tier 10 light tanks, plus some premium vehicles a bit, and so on. The changes in the British heavy tank, medium tank, and tank destroyer branches were necessary because they weren't so popular among players. Although these vehicles were generally good and showed fairly good statistics. We've analyzed a lot of statistics and seen a lot of feedback. That's why these changes in the British tech tree will be complex. Unfortunately, we couldn't fit all the changes into one update, but we will continue to introduce changes step by step. Well, the FV-4005 branch has always been different in gameplay terms, and it's also been very diverse itself. Earlier vehicles in the branch are very distinctive. Then there's the Charioteer. It's quite convenient to play. Then the Conway, which isn't very convenient. And at the top, there's the 4005. This is a controversial vehicle. It's not very popular, so we decided to adjust this branch consistently. This is how we're going to ensure that the changes we're introducing to these vehicles will be appropriate. Speaking of the Charioteer, the changes aren't big, but quite pleasant. We increased its gun depression angles, and this will be a nice addition to the already quite good vehicle. The Conway received an alternative gun, which is more convenient and causes less damage per minute, but has higher damage per shot. This gun has good armor penetration and convenient gun depression angles. It's always nice when a vehicle has an alternative gun, so that players can play and progress through this vehicle in the style they like the most, to fight the way they want to fight. It means they don't have to play with the stock gun, but they have two different top guns. Those who like high damage per minute more can use one gun. Those who like high damage per shot and good angles will choose another gun, and this way everyone's happy. Considering the 405, there were a great many positive changes. Its maximum speed, turret traverse speed, and reverse speed were all increased. Some players gave us their feedback, said they weren't happy, and we added more ammunition as a result. In this update, we touched only the 4005 branch, leaving the FV-183 branch. After we replaced the Fosh 155, there were a lot of questions and discussions about what vehicles will be next and what we would do. At the moment, we have a candidate to replace the FV-183B. This will be a unique vehicle, and we owe thanks to our historians for finding a suitable option. Of course, the vehicle that will replace the FV-183B will be a logical development of the branch. I mean the branch of the AT and Tortoise tank destroyers. Its characteristics and tactics in battle will be close to the current TDs of the branch. We'll talk about this another time, but following the established practice, all owners of the FV-183B will keep it in their garages as a rare, special vehicle. Now let's talk about the changes in the British medium tank branch. They weren't properly armored, so their role was mainly support. In this update, the vehicles received more armor, and now they have more advantages than before. In general, they were already quite good, but now we brought them up to a logical order for the whole branch. The branch of British heavy tanks is well established. It's been in the game for a long time. Heavy tanks were generally good as well, but there was one, let's say, ideological issue. They weren't different enough from the medium tank branch. We tried to make heavy tanks heavier, to add more armor and more powerful guns, to tune their characteristics so that playing them felt different from playing medium tanks in a meaningful way. All in all, these changes weren't too significant, and these vehicles didn't become any less enjoyable. We changed them just enough to meet player expectations to a greater extent. And when you face these vehicles, you will understand that it's actually a heavy tank and not a kind of hybrid between a medium tank and something else. 
Surely, the vehicles that received additional armor and additional survivability inevitably lost some of their dynamics. In order for these vehicles to feel and be played like heavy tanks, we had to reduce their maneuverability, mobility, and sometimes turret traverse speed. This shouldn't affect gameplay in general, but the branch became slower. A slow, heavy tank branch, in our opinion, is right, so we put this branch in order. Regarding the FV-215B, yes, it's a nice vehicle that deservedly enjoys popularity, but there's one problem with it. All vehicles before it don't lead players to this kind of gameplay. We have long thought about whether we need to change the FV-215B or not. There have been different options. We worked on the Chieftain, one of its early modifications, as a replacement. We even have the model ready for this tank. But with time, we realized that the Chieftain didn't fit the current game concept, so we couldn't add it to the branch. The Vickers didn't appear in the game for the same reason, but we added the Centurion Action X to the medium tank branch, and now we found a suitable vehicle. It's the Super Conqueror. It's a logical evolutionary development of Tier 9 vehicle characteristics. This is a new, interesting, and beautiful vehicle. We may adjust it a bit in the future. We'll see how players like it. How the fans of the 215B like it. We want it to suit them as well. But it should be different from the current Tier 10 and more similar to its predecessors in the branch. And of course, all owners of the FV-215B will keep it in their garage as a special vehicle. So you will be able to continue playing it if for some reason you don't like the gameplay of the new Tier 10 tank, or if you just want to have two top-tier vehicles in your garage. And it's relatively cheap. The Tier 10 light tanks added in Update 9.18 received a lot of different feedback on them. And according to the results of playing them on the servers, we've come up with some specific adjustments. Most players like these vehicles, but the general complaint was about their insufficient firepower. Players want to contribute to the battle more significantly, using the light tank dynamics and maneuverability, but they don't have the technical capability to do so. They can roll in fast, but there's no one to spot. Everyone's spotted already. And you want to shoot, but their guns aren't what you expect them to be. That's why light tanks received additional ammunition. This change affected all light tanks in the game. If you look at particular ones, the AMX-105 received higher damage per shot because it's a damage per minute tank first and foremost. It's a hybrid version of a scout and a damage dealer. The T-100LT now has higher damage per minute, and the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen became more accurate so it can perform its sniper role more effectively. Of course, since we've improved its accuracy and lowered its dispersion, we nerfed its damage per shot a bit, but increased the number of shots per minute. So it won't affect its DPM much. Also, we improved the convenience of the 105mm gun on the Sheridan to make it more playable. First of all, these changes were, in some cases, aimed at increasing the damage per shot, and in some cases at increasing the damage per minute. These changes aren't too significant. They don't change the role of the vehicles in battle, but they do make them a bit more effective. When we get the results of changes in the upcoming update, we'll see how effectively light tanks are played, how players feel about them, and if necessary, more adjustments will be made. Changes made to the T-71 are connected with our work to make branches as consistent as possible. For the U.S. light tanks, there were branches with both auto-loading and non-auto-loading vehicles but there were no vehicles that would prepare players for the top tanks. The T-71 allowed players to try its two modifications, with and without the autoloader. So the aim of the upcoming separation is to make the player feel the nuances of the branch as early as possible and learn to play a particular type of vehicle. The logic behind these changes is very simple. Instead of the T-71, its twin version without the autoloader will appear. The T-71 itself will still be available in the branch and lead to the medium and heavy tanks with autoloaders, the T-69, T-54E1, and T-57 heavy. No significant changes were made to this tank. There were no such plans. We just added the second vehicle with the classic gun and same gameplay. There's bad news as well. To make the branch consistent, we had to remove the auto-loading gun of the Bulldog. 
because this tank is in the branch leading to the Sheridan. It was a hard decision and we discussed it for a long time because we understand that many players like it. After it was reworked in 9.18 and tier 10 light tanks were introduced, there was a lot of discussion. But in order to make the branch consistent, we had to remove this gun. For the last two years, we've been working a lot on adjusting premium vehicles. And finally, we got to the Type 59. This vehicle lost its relevance a bit because new premium vehicles were introduced, the characteristics of other vehicles were changed, and new branches and mechanics were added. So we decided, roughly speaking, to buff this vehicle. But this is not a buff that will cause the future limitation of these vehicles in battles or make us do something else. It's a careful buff. We improve the Type 59's stabilization on the move and stabilization on turret traverse. Plus, we improve the gun's reload time. All these parameters are connected. All in all, we can say that the gun stabilization improved significantly. Premium vehicles should be on par with researchable vehicles. That's why we're fixing the Type 59. The 59 pattern also changed for the better. The vehicle received 212 mm of armor penetration with a standard shell. This will make playing it more convenient and effective. Another legendary vehicle with a layout very close to the Type 59, the T-34-3, had the reload time of its big gun improved as well. The turret also got better. Now it's identical to the Type 59's turret. Regarding the FV-4202, its changes are positive and close to the changes made to the researchable British medium tanks. We improved its armor and slightly boosted its dynamics. As for future work, we, on the one hand, continue adjusting the vehicles in the current branches. But on the other hand, we don't forget that we need to work on new vehicles and add them to the game. One of the new features may be a branch of French heavy tanks without autoloaders. These are the tanks that fit the concept of the AMX 5100, but without autoloaders. They are quite well armored and played more like the AMX M449. So, three pretty well armored vehicles. I mean tier 8, tier 9, and tier 10. We plan to add them into the game. An approximate example of what the alternative branch of French heavy tanks will or may be like is the T110E5. They are sturdy, versatile vehicles with a very convenient set of characteristics. To finish things off, I'd like to say that the characteristics of the vehicles you saw during the super test are not even close to the final characteristics that will be used in most cases. We test them out, we see how they work. So I'd like to ask everyone to treat the information from the super test with caution. The characteristics and changes we made are not final. There are a lot of examples where we went back on our decisions after the super test or common test, made it clear that we shouldn't do something, as was the case with the bot shot, or examples of when we made other decisions as it was with the Soviet medium tank branch. Please always share your feedback. Feel free to leave constructive criticism and voice your opinion. It's important for us to understand what our players think and how you feel about the current changes. Your feedback matters to us.